Hi, in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to connect your passive infrared sensors with a tamper function. Now, I'm going to be using the X64 by IDS, and this is the general layout that you need to follow. Please note, if you're using an older manual, such as the IDS805, you will see that the layout of the resistors is slightly different. Therefore, for this tutorial, I'm working with the X64 model. Right, so let's get straight in. This is the alarm panel zone. So that's the zone at the alarm. Here I have a test panel, and there are the zones which you normally connect up to your PRRs. So in terms of the drawing, that's the panel side. Then this over here is the sensor side. So you'll notice there's the 12 volt negative. So this is to power up the sensor. So there you can see the positive and the negative coming from your supply, usually from the auxiliary of your main board. So that gives the sensor power to work. Right, now the next terminals are the normally closed terminals. Now having a look here, you can see that from the zone, the positive is going straight into the first connector of the normally closed terminal. And also notice that there's a 4K7 resistor that links this terminal to the first wire of the tamper. Over here I have a 4K7 resistor. This is blue in color because it's more accurate. This is a 1% tolerance resistor. Which, If you look over there, there is a carbon resistor, but it is a 5% 4K7 resistor. Just looking at the colors, yellow, purple, red. And if you have a look at my 1% resistor, yellow, purple, so that's 47. But because this is a 5-band resistor, it is 4, 7, then it's black, which is 0, then it's brown, so it's times 10, and then the 1%. So it's a little bit different, and you can just use your meter to measure it. So there you can see I'm measuring it 4.67 kilo ohms. So you can call that 4K7. So from the first normally closed terminal, I jump or I link right to the first terminal of the tamper with a 4K7. So there you can see the first side of the normally closed terminal and the first terminal of the tamper switch. And then don't forget the positive of the zone must also go in here at the first terminal of the normally closed. So in this case, the positive happens to be blue. How did I know that the positive was blue? Well, I wired it like that on the alarm panel. If you have a look at the alarm panel, you see zone one, blue is on the one, and the white is on the negative there between the one and the two. You can see there's a negative sign there. Now from the other terminal of the normally closed, I link with the 12K resistor to the first terminal of the tamper. So you can see both legs of the resistor are meeting here at the tamper. So this is my 12K resistor. And I'll just measure it there for you and look how accurate that is, 12.01 kilo ohms. And just a tip, when you are measuring resistance, try not to touch both sides. Try just rest the leg on the one side. You'll get a more accurate measurement. Right, now just a tip. Can you see that I'm crossing over here with the one leg on top of the other leg? Now that could be a short. So please be careful when you wire the resistor. What I should do, I should shorten this leg so it's on the inside of this resistor. You don't want this thing to touch there as it's going to short that out. So there you can see from the other side of the normally closed terminal, I link it with the 12K resistor meeting together at the same tamper terminal. Now going back to the IDS X series training manual version 2.7, you can see that it says from the output of the tamper, goes back home to the zone to the negative. So there is my negative wire from the alarm panel. And that then completes the circuit. Right, so let's test it. Now, I want to bring to your attention that you've got a 12K and a 4K7, which is in parallel if this contact here is closed. Now that is a normally closed contact and those two legs are shorted out together, and these two legs would be shorted out together when this PRR is switched on, but not violated. On, but not violated. Remember, that zone closes as soon as you power up this PRR. So that means that that leg and that leg actually short out, which means I basically have a 4K7 resistor in parallel with a 12K resistor, and guess what that equals? There is a 4K7 resistor and there's a 12K resistor and look at that, 3.36 kilo ohms or 3K3. I'm sure you're familiar, the standard single end of line resistor for normal setups without the tamper is a 3K3 resistor. 
Look at that, 3.26, call it 3K3. Remember that this is a 5% resistor, not as accurate as these 1% resistors. So look at that, 3.36 kilo ohms. We've effectively made it a 3K3 resistor when everything is unviolated. Let me show you with the voltage. Look at the voltage of a zone that is currently open. There I've got zone 3. It is currently an open zone, so it is measuring 4.82 volts. That tells me it's an open zone, violated. Now let's have a look at the sensor. If I measure between the white and the blue, look at the voltage, 4.8 ohms. And if I close this tamper switch, remember the tamper switch is just going to short this white wire onto those two resistors. Look what happens. It goes to 2 volts. What does 2 volts tell you? 2 volts tells you it is an unviolated normal zone. Looking at zone 4 here, I have a 3K3 resistor between zone 4 positive and the common. And look at the voltage. 2 volts. Don't worry about the sign. If I swap these around, there you will get your 2 volts. So there you see the meter is showing 2 volts for a normal unviolated zone when it's got a 3K3 resistor across it. So therefore, when I come show you here at the sensor, when I depress the tamper switch, look at that, a normal unviolated zone. But here's the difference. When I open the tamper, look at that, 4.8 volts. So 4.8 volts would have normally been a violated zone, but now the alarm panel will know that 4.8 volts actually is tamper. So what is the voltage when it is violated? Well, let me move here. Notice the infrared is now picking up my motion and look at the voltage on the meter, 2.4 odd volts. So almost 2.5 volts, look at that. That means when you do make a tamper zone, you also have to tell the panel that it's a tamper zone. All right, so there you can see I've wired the tamper on this sensor. Now I'll quickly show you on the IDS's own sensor. Here is the PIR supplied by IDS. And you can see I followed the same thing, it's just that the pinouts are slightly different. Positive and negative to power up the sensor. From the positive of the zone, there's the 4K7 resistor. The 4K7 resistor then links to the first terminal of the tamper. The first terminal of the tamper also links to the other side of the normally closed terminal with a 12K resistor. On the output of the tamper, there goes the white wire, which happens to be by negative, going back home to complete the circuit of the zone. Right, a quick measurement. Notice that it's 4.8 volts, but if I press this spring to close the tamper switch, remember that this uses a push button switch as the tamper. So I'm going to just wait for that to go off. Look at that. 2 volts is telling me that it's unviolated. Now I'm going to move around. And look at that, 2.4 odd volts telling me that the zone has been violated. Look, there it goes again, violated. And if I open the tamper at any point in time, it open circuits it, you get the full voltage of 4.8 volts. So even though these are two different makes of sensors, they do the same thing in terms of how the tamper functions. Right, for each zone that you wire a tamper resistor to, you need to tell the alarm that that zone has tamper enabled. You'll press your default installer code. Usually it's four nines followed by the star key. Then it takes you to the installer menu. Say for example the zone that you have installed that additional tamper resistor to was say zone 3. Then you'll press 103 followed by the star key. Now the very first thing it asks you is data 1. And that is the tamper option. Do you want tamper on or off? If I press star it says yes. So now you've enabled tamper on zone 3. If you want it off you press star. The default is off. If you do not tell the alarm that it's a tamper zone it will not interpret those voltages correctly. Remember that changing those two resistors changes the behavior of that zone. For example, tamper now means 4.8 volts or 5 volts, while violated is 2.5 volts. So when you change the parameter on the zone, the alarm will then interpret those voltages correctly. 
then you will notice that when you use the tamper, it will actually update you. You see there it says zone tamper, zone tamper. So I was playing with this on my alarm and you can see the tamper was working. If the alarm is not armed, it will still give you a notice telling you the zone had a tamper alert. So here you can see all the tampers coming in while I was playing with that sensor. Please do not touch the IR sensor face. If you did touch it and smear fingerprint on it, just clean it with some rubbing alcohol. 90% alcohol is fine. Alright, thanks for watching and cheers.